In this video segment, I'm going to go through the steps in tracing over a parcel map, creating that to a terrain perimeter that can be used for a site plan. I'm also going to rotate it so that I can draw my house at 90 degree angles straight up and down on the screen. What I've done here is I've been able to go out to our local county assessors database and find the lot from a parcel map. I then cropped that down, which I didn't have to for the purpose of the video, to just kind of focus on this lot. So let's go into the program and take a look at the steps involved in tracing this lot. The first step is to save your parcel image on your computer in a location that you can drag into Chief Architect. So the image that you see on your screen here, I've saved that off and I'm just going to simply drag that image into the program. Once I've set that into the program, I'm going to go through and I'm going to trace over this lot. Now since this lot is in an interesting angle, I'm going to turn off my angle snaps on the right hand side of my screen so I'll have a little more flexibility. Once that's turned off, I'm going to come over to the corner of the lot and I'm just going to use the W on the keyboard, which is a shortcut for the line. I'm going to come in approximately where this corner is and I'm going to use the line tool and I'm just going to get an approximation of how long this image is that we have. I've drawn that line, it's right over the top of the image, so I'm going to have to select it and I'm going to open it up and you can see that this line right now is at 13.85 and some change. Now when you open up your line you may see that it's not a decimal. What you can do is in the number style for the dialog I've changed my display to be in decimal feet in this case. So I know that it's 13.85. I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to put this information into Excel so we can do a little bit of math. Okay, so here's what I've done is I've taken that image length, which was 13.86 when you round it to two decimal places. A known length is 155.69 and that came right off of the parcel map itself. And then what I did is I took that number, if you take a look at my formula here, and I've divided that by so I took the known length and divided it by the image length. That gives me a rescale factor of 11.23. Now I'm going to delete that temporary line that we drew to rescale it, select the image itself, and then in the lower menu system you'll see a transform replicate edit tool. And in this case I'm going to use that 11.23 number that we got and resize it in all directions at that scale. Go ahead and fill my screen back in. I've now resized that factor and I'm going to use the line tool and let's come in and draw our lines and trace over the image. So W on the keyboard, come in to the approximate corner. This isn't exact but this is approximate. As I'm drawing this out I'm just going to press the tab key so I can be very precise. You see the line is 155.69. I'm going to type that into the dialog so that I have it exact as I trace this out. 155.69. Come in, pick up my snap, Again, as I'm following this line here, I'm going to press the tab key. And in this case, I'm going to put in 118.65. Again, pick up the snap, come down along this line. Again, press the tab key, put in 154.37. This just helps me be a little more exact. I could trace that without pressing the tab key, but it's just a process that I use. And now the final line, I'll pick up the snap. I'll bring it over, pick up the other snap, select the line which is now a closed polyline. You can tell by the shading. With that line selected, I'm going to use the Convert Line to Arc tool in the lower menu. And then I'm going to grab this small diamond and I'm just going to approximately come over the top of that. This line segment may be close to 150.00. You can open it up. You can check what that line is. Selected Arc. You can see that we're pretty close, but not quite exact. Again, this is approximation and now I've got my closed perimeter. Let's zoom out here a little bit and I'm going to leave that in place. I'm just going to simply create a copy of that and I'm going to slide that over off to the side because this is where I'm actually going to go through the steps of converting this to a terrain perimeter. Now when I grab this parcel map the north arrow pointer is actually pointing straight up so that will allow me to rotate this and create a north pointer so it allows me to draw my walls at 90 degrees because I don't want to draw my walls at a strange angle if I'm going to have my house parallel to this upper line. Now before I rotate this so that the line on the top here is at a 90 degree angle I'm going to select the line 
I'm going to open it up and I'm going to note the angle. In fact, I'm going to copy that angle, control C on my keyboard here. I'm going to paste it into my Excel spreadsheet. Let's bring that over. So I pasted that in. The original angle is at 27.06 by the time it rounds down. And when I rotate it, it's going to rotate that if I note a distance of or an angle at 90 or 180, the rotated difference will be 62.9 or 152.9, depending on which way the rotation occurs. Let's go ahead and rotate that so that it's at a 90 degree angle. And notice that it's moving in unrestricted angles. So let's toggle the angle snaps back on. Let's rotate this so that it's a 90 degree angle. And I'm just going to slide it over here just a little bit. Now let's draw in our north pointer. Let's come in here, draw our north pointer, and this is where that angle is going to come into play. So let's select that, open it up, and on that angle, remember in our spreadsheet, we did the math here. The original was at 27, so that means that angle needs to be, in this case, 152.94. So I'm just going to copy that, make it easy on myself, come in here and paste that in the angle. Now my north pointer is exact. Let's go ahead and say OK. And now when I display my bearing line information, if that's important to me, that angle will pick it up from the north pointer. Now I've traced over the lot. I've rotated it, set the north angle pointer. Let's select this perimeter, this polyline that we've created. And let's turn on the lengths of the lines and also the angles. Once it's open, on the line style panel, I'm going to choose to show the length and show the angle. Now you can see that, first of all, I'm showing that length in fractional feet. Now, it doesn't seem to match the decimal feet that we had on the parcel map. So let's take a look. First of all, note that I'm using my plot plan annotations and a plot plan layer set. Well, what does that mean? Let's take a look at that annotation set. And you'll notice that the current CAD layer that's defined to that is called CAD plot plan in this case. So what I want to do is let's go into the defaults and make this look like it should for a plot plan. So underneath my defaults, let's go into the CAD default and let's edit that to have, first of all, the displayed line length. Let's change that to decimal feet. So I'm going to come down here, choose feet, choose decimal, and then on the line angle, I'm going to change that in this case to be quadrant bearing. And once we close these dialogues, you can see that the information, if I zoom out here a little bit, you can see that the 155.69 now matches that information and we have the quadrant information in here. Now if you're just after creating a site plan, you may be finished at this point after you overlay your house. But if you actually want to see this terrain in 3D, I have to convert this to a terrain parameter. Once I select the polyline here, I'm going to convert that using the Convert Polyline tool, and I'm going to select Terrain Perimeter in this case, and that asks me a couple of questions about the thickness and everything. I'll just accept the defaults, and one more step will be to convert this to a terrain layer. If you open it up right now, it's actually on the CAD plot line plot plan layer because I've used that to trace over. So I'm just going to switch that layer by going into the layered panel and choosing the terrain and setting it on my terrain perimeter. Once that's done, I can actually now see this in 3D. So I'll just use my overview camera, take a look at it. You can see that here's our lot perimeter. There's no slope to it. If you want to add some slope to it, in this case, this lot's actually sloped. Let's go in, change our menu configuration to the terrain configuration, and I'm going to draw two lines, one at the front and one at the back. So let's just set this one towards the back, turn that layer on, and we'll draw one up to the front. If you want it to match that angle at the front, you can again maybe curve that and we'll just pull that angle down to be approximate. And then we'll set this elevation at minus 20 feet. You do need two lines. Once that's selected, you'll see that it generates that contour information. A lot of times I don't like to see those numbers in red, so I'll open up the terrain perimeter. And on the contours panel, there's a option here to highlight negative values. Once you turn that off, that will remove the red. And then back into the 3D view, you can see the sloping of the lot that you have. So that's the process of going through and creating your trace over your lot. It's not exact. It's an approximation. But get an image from the parcel. Trace over it. If you want to rotate it, you saw the process where I grabbed the angle before I did the rotation. I put it into a little spreadsheet so I could calculate it from 90 or 180 degrees. And then I converted that 
polyline to a terrain perimeter and then you can see that in 3D. Now the next video I'm going to go through the steps of importing this a little more precisely from a surveyor's map and a DWG.